This is the DMT One to One Show, episode 41, on the 26th of December 2013. An interview with Benjamin Shogler, creative director at Scoob Music. Hello everyone and welcome to the DMT uh, one-to-one show and it's a real pleasure this week to welcome uh, Benjamin uh, Shogler who is creative director at Skug. So hi Benjamin and great to have you on. How's it going? Yeah, good thanks. It's uh, nice to be here and uh, nice to have an opportunity to chat. Absolutely. So uh, I've been interested in the Skug as soon as I saw the uh, press release about it uh, going uh, um, on sale at the Apple Store. Uh, but the story of the company is, is uh, quite uh, quite a bit longer than, than just this year. So uh, do you want to start by uh, telling me how uh, the project came together and, and when it started out? Yeah, so the Skug is, uh, I suppose, the, uh, the end result of a very long period of, of, of research and work that's been going on uh, across the UK and, 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 and across the world, actually into music and education and trying to think, you know, how can we get more uh, children engaged in making music early on? And specifically children with uh, disabilities or young people with, who, who face barriers to making music. Because, you know, everyone agrees in, uh, across the globe that more kids should be being more creative in education, particularly doing music specifically. But then, you know, musical instruments, you have to, uh, you have to learn how to play them and they can be complicated and... We got involved at a point um, where we were working with children with or young people with disabilities, and how how can you get them involved in making music if they're not physically able to say hold a flute or they don't have the coordination and control to be able to bow a violin? And so we managed to raise some funding from Nesta uh, in 2006 to go out, work with schools, work with young people, work with teachers to try and go back to the drawing board a little bit and see if we could create a new type of instrument or interface that would allow uh, people who can't make music via traditional means to be able to engage and play and be creative and start engaging in making music. And one of the key things about this project that was that is different from many others is it had to, there was a, a mandate from Nesta on three fronts. One was that we had to cover as wide a range of ability as, as possible. So this meant going sort of through more applying principles of universal design. We are trying to create something that can be used by everyone, or as wide a range of people as possible, that includes people with disabilities, but yeah. doesn't then exclude others as a result. Sure, so you're not sure. making something specifically using eye tracking for someone who's a quadriplegic, or, you know, there's, there's lots of different specialised technology, but this was about making something more general. Um, the second was that it had to afford expressive potential um, for performance. So uh, there are things you can use with switches to trigger sounds and, and use things, you know, which, which you can be expressive with, with and it's quite skillful. But they meant on the expressive front, it, more akin to playing an acoustic instrument where you have physical control of the timbral shaping and quality. Right. And the third thing that they said it had, it had to afford uh, educational development. So it had to be something you could get good at, that you could, you know, play with other people and you could you know, learn and grow with as an instrument. Um, and so we spent a, a two years embedded in schools and play wards and all kinds of various places across the UK, um, working with people in a kind of participatory design project, which at the end of which we had uh, something like this. And we had one of the prototypes, which is a soft, squeezable USB interface. It's a cube, a simple interface, a simple shape with its own software platform that we then, uh, between 2008 and 2010, we then went out to raise the money to try and get it manufactured uh, yeah. and marketed, yeah. and then we launched it in 2010. And since then, it's been um, shipping all over the place, mostly in the UK are the main the main user base, but we, are, we do have quite a few in Australia, Hong Kong, uh, states across Europe, you know, bits and pieces here and there. And it's being used... Uh, in a range of contexts from uh, early years and special needs, orchestral performance, music therapy, or just electronic musicians interested in trying a, a different approach. Yeah. Uh, you know, you were talking about the process of understanding how to uh, create the instrument as well. So how did you uh, come, uh, you know, how did, how did you get to the idea of the cube with the sensors? And so, how do you develop also the sensitivity aspects of it? Uh, it seems yeah. very uh, accurate and very uh, tactile on the, on the front. I mean, the key thing, I mean, the key thing for us right from the start was, was the, 
we, we knew we wanted to work with physical modeling as this as a synthesis engine yeah uh, so that we had really high quality you know sounds that you could get in and control and the, the whole tactile nature and the cube thing all came from working with individuals and so we worked with lots of different sensors and sensor technologies and you know at, at, at the time when we were working you know we had just come out and was we, people were hacking that and doing things and that was great um, but with this, as soon as we started embedding sensors within a tactile, deformable material, something that is soft, it really was engaging. And that is because as human beings, we are drawn to and designed to, to, to touch tactile things. You know, we are soft. You know, flesh is this. This is what we're made of. And that's actually what we're made to interact with. And so it's a very natural thing. And that's why squeezy things are make you want to squeeze them, okay? It's a, it's a very kind of, you know, fundamental kind of perceptual thing. And so that was the kind of driver there. And then in terms of the shape and the form, we did begin working with spheres and things because a sphere is probably the most ergonomic yeah. form in terms of using your hands. But again, a lot of people we're working with or do work with, it's not necessarily about using your hands. It could be using your feet. It could be using another part of your body. You may not have hands. You know, these are things that you have to consider. And in that, what we wanted to do is, is to find a simple form that allowed um, a high level of control, which is delivered through the interaction of this kind of patented tactile technology with the physical models, which gives yeah, this yeah. kind of real tactile, tacit uh, way of creating the sounds, which I can show you in a minute. But then trying to produce an interface that reduced the degrees of freedom enough to make it intuitive and simple to use as well. It's yeah, quite yeah. A, a difficult thing. And one of the things that... Um, we did, we, we did in terms of looking at, at stuff is, is, the, is the idea of how many notes do you need at a time, yeah. okay? Yeah. So acoustic instruments have you know, all of the notes that you can get out of them there all of the time, and you have to learn how to, to use your fingers, your breath, your lips, whatever it is, to get those in, notes out. And then you have to make choices about which ones to use at various points or which ones to use to play a tune with other people. Um, so you don't need them all all the time. It's nice to have them, okay, and that affords a, a, a flexibility and freedom. But with us, we said, well, let, let, you know, how can we make a a simple, robust, cognitively kind of resonant object that affords a degree of uh, interactivity and complexity that allows you to be creative? And that's where we got to with, with you know with the cube. The cube is a very strong form. And it works very well whether you have a visual impairment as well. These are other, other users of ours. So all the surfaces are orthogonal, which means they're all at right angles to each other. Okay, So it's very easy to know where I am yeah. on the cube. The raised uh, domes, or um, they're not actually buttons, although they do look like buttons. Um, they're like a guide, a target, a physical kind of call to action, if you will. They say, press me. They're, they're, they're like the big red button, you know? They're like, oh, yeah. it does have a big red button. You, you can't see it on the other <laughs> side here. Um, and, and so that raised, that curved raised surface on a flat surface to your hand and to your body, to your mind says, says press me, says touch me. Yeah. Uh, and, and that's what it does. It, it makes you want to touch it. And so by using the cubic form, we, we get, uh, we can then divide it up into five surfaces. We could do six of it, but it needs to sit on its base. Um, and that, again, is a way of, it's, a scoop has a degree of weight, it's weighted, so it knows if you're holding it, it will write. You know, you know, you know which way is up and down, yeah. you know, in terms of when you feel it. Because at the moment, this one is mounted just for the purposes of this presentation. But um, a lot of, it can be played by moving it as well. And yeah. we, you know, people play with it on the ground, on the floor, and using it in different ways. And so it's, a, it's this idea of trying to take, uh, looking again at what you, what do you need from a, you know, from an interface. There's the, Acoustic instruments are constrained by the physics of the sounds you're trying to make. Yeah, Whereas if yeah. you accept that you're going to use the computer as the sound source, then you don't have to, you're not bound by any of those rules. Yeah. You don't need yeah. a keyboard to look like a keyboard. It's not making any, you know, electronic keyboard. It's not making any sound. So, it, you know, you could try and you can go back to thinking, well, let's make something that's designed to invite touch so that it, it can be used by people who maybe don't have language. You're trying to... Uh, access and, and, and work with in say in the musical therapy terms or let's make something that's that's you know accessible and makes sense to the hands of someone with a visual impairment so that it can it's easy to navigate you can and work out where you are yeah. and let's try yeah. and make something that offers an, a higher level of control for people who want to then take that forward and, and play and you know music another thing about music is it, I mean it, I, I, I adore music it's, it's kind of my life but, um, the more the, the better quality of sound that you have 
you know, the, 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 the more access to sort of expressive variation things, the more fun you'll have, the more engaging it will be. And so, I mean, I, I mean I've had fun making music with a cowbell. It's awesome. But then if you get two cowbells, you're like, hey, that, you know, that's even better. And, you know, as you broaden things out, you get to play with different sounds like, wow, that's just, you know, that's where the creativity happens. That's where you can engage people and have fun. Um, so that's that was the process of, of kind of trying to think slightly differently about, you know, well, if, if the computer is making the sound, then what can we do with the interface to make it more usable and make it friendly, you know, and uh, a, de a degree of, you know, cognitive simplicity saying, well, I've got these five surfaces. They each make a different sound. Okay, that, that makes sense. So how can I use that? The question now is, I suppose, how can I use that to play music? Yeah. And that's where the, the kind of software platform we have comes in, which is here. So the software allows you to, to set this up to be used in lots of different ways. So essentially, you have your Skoog software. It's Mac and PC. Um, we support Windows users as well. Um, and the software offers quite a range of flexibility. So if I want to set the notes on each surface... Yeah. It yeah. comes with a bunch of preset pentatonic scales. Oh, great. It, doesn't have, it doesn't have to be, but that in the educational context, and I'll show maybe if I could show a little clip of a video of how it's being used. Essentially, so you can change the notes. So here I've got a little C, a C major, C minor scale. Okay, and it's important to note the scoop that the whole thing is sensitive. Yeah. So here is yeah. I'm touching the top surface, which we sort of call the orange surface, denoted by the orange color. So it's sensitive everywhere in each plane, and this means that I can use the edges, I can use the buttons, I can play it with my chin. Yeah. I can play it, you know, I can, and, and we can customize the sensitivity, well, the user can, to create a sculpted sensitivity profile, so we can adjust the sensitivity by surface, yeah. so that you can create a very specialized uh, profile that allows you to maybe play it, you know, when it's tucked into your body here, and you can play it by leaning and doing different things, so it's a really very customizable, um, a lot of functionality and it, it's yeah it makes it usable by lots of different people anyway sure. back to some of the notes so how this works so we essentially say we choose it to be an instrument yeah so in the physical modeling here is where we choose notes we've got a range of different instruments and there's the core kind of brass woodwind percussion and strings because the original project was about creating something that would allow orchestral performance and i've also got a clip of uh, some recent orchestral work of a soloist uh, working with uh, an orchestra who actually performed as part of the 2012 olympics Great. Uh, the other year which is which is interesting so we've got say flute here this is a, a flutter tongue flute where you have the the flutter you see as i'm pressing i've got a flutter I don't know if you can hear that yeah and as i push through I get the note. Other things with physical modeling is that I can, as well as blowing, I can control the embouchure, so I can, I can, I can put bends in yeah. and control that. So, so it, it's it's kind of a, a, a really diverse kind of platform. Let's go back to kind of simple interface. More percussive instruments, like marimba, they respond to more percussive actions on the scoop. Uh, and we can load up a plucked guitar here. So just give it a second to load the string in there. And sure. I'll do this thing. So here, got a plug string. Now that's great. As I say, we we can um, then assign. So we choose it, and then we choose how the notes are set up. So yeah. we use pentatonic scales. Very simple. And they're really good at the teaching aspect for engaging people and being able, to, and also to allow anyone to be able to start playing with music they like. So if you know what key it tunes in, you can load the right scale and just start playing along and start exploring your musicality. You know, and and having fun playing with music. Um, we can tune it as well, so you can tune acoustically, uh, you know, so it's not stuck in computer tuning, but you can also set the notes manually, so here's the blue, here's on D3, I click the, the uh, padlock, open that up, click blue, change that, I can change it, so I can set the notes manually, yeah. so, uh, and then I can save them, and then we can load in sets of notes, so, uh, oh, that's me saying, let's just load it in, let's load something in, we can say Scoop Resources, let's do uh, something that you might recognize, and we could do, there we go, this is a load in set of notes for this, and now I have uh, notes for tune by 
Journey, the 80s classic, and I can... And I can play, I can play that, so that's not a, you know... It really offers a range of um, different ways of playing. The other thing yeah. with notes are it's five notes at a time, so for, for that reduces the kind of complexity of say being presented with a whole keyboard and having to make choices. But you can change those as you're going along. So you can either drag new note files in, which is what some people do in more complex compositions, or you can simply transpose the notes that you have into another key. Yeah. Uh, it's quite easy to do. So there, there's different ways of playing. It's not, you know, it's not trying to be to replace the violin. You know, it's, this is a different approach to making music. It's trying to say, well, let's, let's try something new. Um, and there's lots of different ways of playing it. So th other key thing is it, it can be monophonic or polyphonic, okay? But one of the things is you can't play against, you can't play an opposing side. Yeah. So if I press these two together, I don't get anything because it is the physical interaction with the foam that controls and drives the models. Yeah. So um, I can play up to three in the same kind of plane, yeah. but I can't play against myself. And there's a, so there's a degree, there is a degree of... Um, exploration and learning with the Skoog. Uh, it, it is it is easy to interact with, but there uh, there's there's some fun bits of discovery, like discovering that the white bits make sound. Yeah. And this is really important for introducing a playful element to making music as well. And and for some of our younger users, the fact that it is something that they can explore and and and, and find different things to do with, you know, off their own back is a really important thing. Yeah. But if I could just now very quickly. Um, so you choose it to be an instrument, you then assign notes to the Skoog so you can play it. Um, it. Very quickly, it will do MIDI and it will do sampling as well. Okay, So it isn't a MIDI controller, it's a, an expressive analog physical modeling controller, a, a tactile patented one, but it, it does MIDI as well. So we can actually send MIDI out of the software and then essentially you have these five kind of MIDI kind of... Um, pads, as it were, that you can then assign to control uh, connect to garage band, control the instruments in there, or to Cubase, or anything that will take a MIDI input software-wise. That's awesome. You can, you can reach that. And we've got some interesting people playing with things there. And, and it has its own sa uh, so sampling engine, which has got some really interesting stuff uh, in reference to the tactile control, which I think I'll, yeah. I should show you later. But so let me so just the sampler, uh, in that case, I can see that it also has a record button. So, of course, in an in a educational context, you can also record samples on the fly and then have yeah. kids play with them, which is really good fun. So, I mean, if you could just say your name for me. Yeah, Andrea. Oh, there we go. So, let's get you, you say your name here. Andrea. Uh, let's, I've got it. I'm, okay, it's coming to the software. I'm going to copy that to all. And I'm going to... Play. That's me using a kind of scrub function where I can <laughs> control cool. where the playhead is. So I can then I could pitch that. I could make a little pentatonic scale with it and uh, start to make a use it sort of as an instrument. Love um, it. it's great. So we it's lots works really good with vocals. Um, yeah, and and. Mo uh, different tones and found sounds you can take really mechanical sounds and start to create a pitch palette with that and really start to create kind of soundscapes and stuff like that which has a lot of applications in, in the educational context as well but it's just really uh, a fun way of messing around with sounds and playing them and, and, and warping them you know and then re re reusing them and trying to kind of you know do remixes and stuff but um, going back to the kind of I suppose where Scoob began uh, it would be starting with some of the the kind of different users so yeah. we've got a rate of, I'll show you just four clips of, of users and, and if I could just tell you what you're going to see and then I'll play you a short clip of someone using it. So what we've, I'll show you first is a, is a young chap who represents um, a user group who are, say, young people in, in education and this this uh, young man called Kieran, so he has, you would say, profound and multiple learning difficulties, which means he has both physical and, and a cognitive challenges in, in, that he faces. He's at school. Um, he doesn't, uh, in, at, at this point, he, he doesn't use, uh, he doesn't speak, but he does communicate. You know, he communicates what he wants and whether he likes things. And in this clip, you're going to see him what he's doing is he's playing with the scoop. So it's been set up with a pentatonic scale. He's got a plucked guitar sound, which is one he chose, you know, which he, he liked and he responded to. And then by putting that in the right key for the piece of music that, that the teacher has on at the time, he's then able to play and express himself. And you'll, if you, you know, watch and listen to the clip, you'll see that he's, he's beautifully in time and he's listening to the sounds. And one of the core things for him being, he's also completely blind. And so he's got his head up and he's engaged. And it's, that's quite a, 
a significant thing for him and, and he's exploring touching the, the skook in different ways. So he starts plucking it and playing it first and then he starts striking it. He gets a different timbral sound and a different, you know, the instrument sounds different when he touches it in yep. a different way. And that's because of the physical modeling. So it's not, it's not just triggering a, a sampled sound. It's not just triggering a kind of MIDI, you know, a strike. It's, it's an interactive kind of generation between how the foam is compressed and how that uh, generates the sound in the physical model. So let me just um, open this clip. So for, for someone like Kieran, Kieran doesn't know how to play the guitar. He also doesn't know a great deal of music theory. Not it just you know he doesn't know what key the tune's in. But by set, using the Scoo kind of presets like the pentatonic scales, the teacher can set it up so that he can play with it, and by playing with it, he's able to make music. So it's a very direct uh, kind of tool in that sense. Okay, does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. No, it's it's really beautiful, and, and it it. Yeah, it makes sense uh, to me as well because uh, I also have a uh, my girlfriend. Is, it does a lot of work with kids and, and music uh, teaching on that front, so it uh, definitely resonates with uh, some yeah. of the work that she's done with uh, 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 kids on on the autistic spectrum and stuff like that. I mean, kid, kid, kids are musical. Kids have their own spontaneous musical culture. They sing and they dance without being taught how. Um, and it's our jobs as parents and as musicians to inspire them and help them do more and support them in that. Um, but when you know when you find a situation where, where children have impairments or disabilities, sometimes they're cut off from that natural childhood musicality, and that natural musicality actually supports all of our development and how we learn and grow as young people. So if we can find ways of giving kids a route back in to be, you know, to to, to making music by whatever means, uh, then it's going to be then that's that's kind of one of our kind of core cool things. So okay, next, I just cool. want to show you moving on in terms of ability and in terms of applications. Okay, so this is an example of, an orca of it being used in an orchestra. So this is a young lady called Stephanie Forrest here. You see in this clip, she has a skug in front of her. And you can see, or you will see, if I open it out here, she's got uh, music stands like everyone else. And she actually has, as opposed to improvising, she has a coloured score that looks like... Um, well, I can actually show you her actual score. Let me, let me do that. So it's a coloured score that looks like this. Oh, oh cool. Wait a minute. Started the wrong tune there. Uh, so it's a coloured score that looks like this that she's using. She's not playing that, she's playing another one. And so using that, she is able to play with uh, an orchestra and able body peers. And she's actually the soloist in this. And this was wow. a specific composition for this group of people. She's playing the clarinet solo um, for a piece called Technophonia. She has actually several solos to play in this. Um, She's playing to really quite a high level uh, and is uh, now she's part of a, a, a group of musicians and she's making her own music and Skoog is part of that, which is great. You know? And so for her, you know, by using Skoog, you know, she's 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 a, you know, she's she's found a musician that she is and then supported in a variety of ways and she's going on to make music and uh, explore, you know, being a musician in the real world. She's 17 in in, in this clip, she's actually 18 now, Stephanie. Right. Uh, if you were to close your eyes and listen to that, you, it wouldn't stand. You know, she doesn't stand out as being any different yeah. from any of the other musicians. It's just wonderful music played very, very well and performed to a high level. So that's a, an example. And so Stephanie had has well, she's not at school anymore. When she was at school, she had regular school lessons with Lewis here uh, every week, like a, a normal yeah. instrument. And we actually now have councils up and down the country. So Aberdeen City Council is one who now offers school alongside oboe, alongside cello, alongside flute as an option for children who are in mainstream education but uh, who perhaps have a disability and are physically unable to use uh, those types of instruments but still want to learn music and take part in group music making activities, play in bands and on ensembles and all that kind of stuff. So it's about being inclusive and offering people the opportunity and you know to, to make music and then you know some people will take that further and do different things and some will just enjoy it for the experience that it is. 
thing. Okay. So third, now, so this is an example in a mainstream school, like the thing I was talking about with say, Aberdeen City Council, where you have two uh, young people who are included within uh, the school. Uh, Martina here on the left uh, has cerebral palsy, but she has no learning difficulties. So for her, the barrier she faces is purely a physical one, and the school can be, you know, allow, allows a, a way around that. It's a very usable device uh, and can be customized with sensitivity and things. And uh, Rosie has a, a, a more global developmental delay, and so for her, she, she finds the music theory side a bit difficult, and she finds the using traditional score difficult. So she has a coloured uh, aid here, you know, in terms of the, the coloured indicators, and Martina has a traditional score she's using and she's playing, and they're both playing as part of a mainstream assembly performance, and they're playing the bass guitar part for this whistle group, so we'll just let them play a few bars, so they're playing in unison. They're playing with everyone else. So yeah. Steve, the teacher, he's set the bright notes so they can play the part, and they have to read the music and play, you know, with everyone else. But uh, you know, they're, they're able to be included and and you know, make music with everyone else. That's great. So that's, that's great. another example. And then finally, if we just go. Oh, there we go. Uh, I just want to show you this last clip, which is of uh, a great musician and a friend of, of ours, a young lady called Sam. Now, Sam is a high-functioning autistic uh, lady, uh, girl. She's um, 18, 19, and she is a great musician. She's a singer. She's always sung, okay, um, and actually she writes songs uh, uh, to help raise awareness of autism and how it helps her deal with, you know, uh, being autistic and making her way in the world. And uh, this is just an example of Scoob being used just to be played for the sheer love of playing music and just as, as, a, as a fun, intuitive musical instrument. Yeah. Okay? So she's going to accompany herself playing uh, the 80s classic uh, by Journey, Don't Stop Believing. And she's just playing by ear. So we've seen improvising, we've seen playing with scores, we've seen you know, playing in bands. And this is how she's got the right notes to accompany her vocal. And she's just and she's just playing by ear, so she knows the tune well, you know, and she's a you know, she's a great musician, and she's just sort of showing how she connects with the music and plays. And the important thing is she's and I hand on her, she's never had a Scoog lesson, yeah. Um, and she's amazing. So I'll just let her play, and then we can talk a bit more about the software. Great.
know, she plays on. So it's worth you know checking out the whole of whole of that clip at some point. It, sure, it definitely. Is. I'll throw the, the links in the show notes if you have any links to those. It's great. Play. So it's this whole platform. So it's a combination of the the tactile user centered object. You know, that is this kind of okay. You know, this is nice and simple, which is connected to a high-end physical modeling engine with a, and sampling a MIDI with lots of different functionality, lots of presets to help get you started, but then when you want to really explore and sort of go, well, you know, I'm, I'm you know, fine with Pentatonic Splash, what I want to do is play this specific melody or this nice riff, or I want to play the bass line to something or a, or a keyboard part, you know, whatever it is, you can set, use the software to set the Scoog so you can, you know, play, play the music you want to and explore, you know, being creative. Yeah. Um, so the advanced software offers a range of sort of different interaction possibilities. So here you can adjust the sensitivity by surface, which allows you to really sculpt its kind of profile for how you want to use it. Some people like to leave their hands on it and where you kind of adjust the sensitivity so you can sort of almost tear it. So, you know, like on a scale where you take away the weight of your hands, so it's just your kind of interacting that's that's kind of changing it. We've got these um, twist-tilt functions, which when I mentioned before, if we go back to, say, the flute here, uh, back to our software... I can turn that on here, and I can. You can see it on this here. You can see where I'm twisting it. It's yeah. actually changing the embouchure shape, but we can change the range of that and how how that interacts with that variable and how that works across the whole thing. And it, different instruments have different uh, possibilities there. In, in terms of the, the the brass we've got here, we've got um, it's one of the more sensitive models. Actually, you can see I'm hardly compressing the foam at all yeah. and here I can change the lip tension and turn that on so I can get I can get really nice shaping and tone tone from it um, it does and I can add vibrato and all these different types of things so the different instruments afford different possibilities more percussive things uh, are slightly less dynamic because you know they are percussive so we can change things like the beta hardness to explore different tonality you know different kind of timbral possibilities yeah. and obviously you know, set the pitch and do that kind of thing um, and, and if you have the, the if the instrument is set for a performance where, for example, you need two different sets of five, uh, you know, of, of, of notes, would that be hooked up to MIDI and then you can change the the notes that I've selected automatically that that way? What what's the best? But normally, what what we do is if you're using the physical model, say, then what we and you want to have different patterns of notes, then um, go in here. So in terms of loading a set of notes, you would create the the note file yeah. beforehand. Yeah. And uh, where is my desktop? There it is. And Scoob Resources, here we go, note files. And just so we could, you would just drag in a note file here. Great. Uh, and it changes it. And then when you move to your next part, you would just drag in your next one. Great. And it would do that. And then you can, and, and, and vice versa. Or, you know, if you, if you were, some people use the transpose um, slider to kind of change key. Yeah, you know, if you're holding a melody shape or something, you different part, and then you Perfect. just you know, change key that way. So that's that's a, a, an easy way of doing that. Yeah, absolutely, that's awesome. That's so cool. And like, uh, you know, one of the things that I was thinking about, you know, have you have you guys also thought of applying this cook to? I also know musical actions performed on a computer, like uh, as uh, when it comes to interacting with a machine. Yes, no, we we um, we are looking at so. We've been focusing on on music. Of course, that is that, that's that's been our kind of our drive and our goal. And, and everyone in the company is involved in, in music in some ways. So David, who's the it was the, the co-founder and co-inventor of Scoog, David Scalina, uh, is a you know musician and a musician. He's a musician and a physicist. So he, he has the and a programmer. So he has the understanding of all the physical models and the, the depth of knowledge there. Um, I'm a musician and a psychologist, and that's where the uh, in terms of the applications and the design and, and how it functions and stuff. And then we we have a team around us that help us and, and people that do the programming and stuff, and everyone's involved in music. So that's our kind of core thing. But we do get asked about, you know, using it as a controller for other things. Yeah. Um, and we're, so we're looking at that at the moment. And, we you know, we it's what we're, what we're relying on in that sense is, is, is the feedback from the community. So um, there's a few things that we're working on. The, the people have specifically said, you know, it'd be great if we could use it for, for this, you know, s simple cursor control and stuff, or interacting with a particular program. Yeah. Because, uh, we, you know, we're a small company, we need to focus our, our development efforts, and if we go off on a tangent sure. thinking, oh, sure. it'd be really great if we used it to do, 
uh, something that maybe we wanted to do, then uh, it may not be what the, the community wants. So, so I mean, if it was down to me, all of the, all of the resources would all be just sort of Nordic jazz because that's what I'm into. But you know, <laughs> not everyone's into that. So you know, we have to rely on, on people asking us things. You know, and, and we try and cover cover as many. You know, we try to support the users that are out there using it and that want to use it. So you know, we, we, we and they're good. I mean, our, our community is responsive and, and they do they do ask for stuff and we try and respond. Yeah. Yeah. I, think, I think that's one of the things about it being a combination of um, software and hardware. You know, you do get devices that you know integrated in themselves, and they have all the sounds and stuff, and that's fine. And they're great, but because this has a, a, a you know a, the software is a big, big part of it, um, and the software can be changed. Yeah. So uh, you know, okay, the, the physical form of this is locked, and you know, people are asking us you now, are we going to make more complex shapes or change these things? And you know, we are we're, we're thinking about all the different ways that we can. Um, have have fun with this, but you know we have to focus. The, the the cube is 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 just it is a strong form and it does cover a lot of bases. This idea of trying to cover a, a wide range of people, but we you know we hope to be able to create more fun things. Yeah. But the software can be changed; it can be updated, so we can add functionality. We can you know, or we can refine functionality as we go along, and that's a real that's a real strength of it as a package as well. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And talking about accessibility as well, you know. Um, I know you work with a lot of charities and and uh, across the UK especially. And so, uh, if somebody and, and of course uh, I have to mention that if if somebody was uh, interested in in this cook, the, the price point at the moment is still quite high. So it's it's about five hundred pounds uh, at the moment because of course it is being it is being used a, a lot in in educational uh, uh, settings. And so a lot of schools, of course, it's not it's not a big deal to purchase it. Well, it is. I mean, it, it's it's five hundred pounds, which is. Yeah. Uh, in, it is that is how much it costs. It does in incorporate a lot of of, of high end patented this tactile Absolutely, technology, yeah, yeah. unique interface, and it has its uh, own bespoke software platform that supports a whole range of activities and has lots of resources that comes with it. I mean, if you think of something that, like you know, there's other things out there like say a monome, a basic monome will yeah. come in at five hundred dollars, say oh, or I'm more. Sorry. And there you have to, you know, it's it's a switch band pattern. You have to look, you know, you have to get the software patches to work with it, and you know, it doesn't come sort of ready to, to play as an instrument, yeah. as it were. Yeah. Whereas yeah. it has all these presets where it's just ready to go, and it supports you using it whether if you don't have, you know, music tech knowledge. Uh, it's something like the Eigenhart Pico, which is lovely. You know, that's a really expressive, uh, really dynamic controller, but they yeah. they start yeah. at. Uh, 500 pounds, um, yeah. and perhaps don't have the uh, interactive, accessible sure. kind of platform that this provides no i mean i i completely understand the price point i, I was just gonna ask like uh, if you have uh, for example a list of comprehensive list of uh, who is uh, uh, perhaps allowing children that have uh, 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 oh, uh, issues to to access the, the instrument in case they were interested in trying it out because uh, that'd be quite cool yeah well what we do is i mean what we advise people to do is to get in touch with your local music service Great. so the music services across the uk and scotland all uh, many of them uh, have uh, I, you know, have Scoog, or they have access to, or they know about us, and you know, we offer loans, and you know, we can get stuff to people to see. You know, because sometimes it's, it, again, it's also a matter of some. A lot of our users, they they just want to try. You know, they're the schools like, well, let's see how it works with these people, and then they maybe sure, choose sure. it with lots of different people. So we advise people to get in touch with their music service, or they can contact us directly to see if there's someone. In, you know, it, you know, does our does our do our schools have these? You know, can can we get access to them? Um, and yeah. so you know, they can just get in touch with us through the website, and we can awesome. provide, awesome. provide that information. That's great, and of course, for people around the world, I, you know, I'm, I know that uh, if uh, parents that have uh, kids with uh, disabilities or with learning dis uh, difficult difficulties, uh, they often have you know large groups of parents that you know have the same problems or uh, are in groups where they sort of have kids play play together. So I'm sure that it would make that cost much more affordable if a number of parents are looking at purchasing this as as a group. You know, it, it becomes it can definitely. Be and, and the thing that we offer is, is the Scoog itself, um, you know, is, is a device, and it has a roaming. The, the software license is a roaming site, a roaming license for the right. software, yeah. so it can be downloaded and installed in different locations. So it doesn't have That's to. Awesome. It's not just one install onto one machine. You could use this on one machine, and then I could go to a school and download the software over there and use that same device with that software. So it does offer that flexibility. Um, in terms of international, it now has uh, the software is available in English. French, Italian, German, Spanish, and Portuguese, awesome. and it awesome. also has the user guide in another uh, fifteen languages across Europe and with um, Arabic and Russian as well. So, you know, we are looking to try and support things as widely as possible. Um, 
we are based in the UK, but we do a lot of we do a lot of stuff on Skype. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's 2013, 2014, and you don't <laughs> physically have to be there. And so, you know, we do. I do a lot of uh, calls with teachers and people around the world who want to learn more about it and try and you know see it, see how it works. Maybe chat to us about how they might be able to use it or what they're thinking of. And that that's you know another way of working. Absolutely, and, and yeah, tell me about it. I do most of my shows on Skype, so it's uh, yeah. <laughs> it's definitely the way forward. Uh, well, thanks, thank you so much. Uh, it was an, a fascinating look and uh, incredible work you're doing with uh, the, your education program so really uh, something to look out for and of course I'd encourage uh, listeners that are involved in I know there's a lot of listeners that are involved with the uh, Nord of Robbins for example uh, yes. the, the preferred charity for uh, the music industry uh, and if they are interested in this kind of thing they definitely get in touch with you guys the website is uh, skugmusic.com and uh, uh, you can also search for the skug on the Apple store uh, uh, not in the US at the moment, but uh, definitely in Europe and uh, and the Middle East. Uh, you can uh, search for the Skug on the uh, Apple Store and you can find more info right there as well, uh, which is uh, definitely a very easy way for people to, to find out about it. Yeah. So shall I play you out with a little tune? Absolutely. But this is some nice stuff uh, we've had done by a friend of ours, um, Lucino. Awesome. Uh, so set the key. It's in A minor. Thank you. <laughs> That's great. Well, uh, thank you so much, uh, Benjamin, for your time. It's a real pleasure talking to you. And uh, uh, once again, it's uh, skugmusic.com. Uh, go and check it out. It's uh, really cool. And uh, if you are listening to the audio version of the show, you're missing out this week because uh, we, we did a lot of uh, very cool stuff on the video side. So uh, definitely go and check out the video or go on skugmusic.com and check out some of the videos that they have on the site. Uh, thanks again, Benjamin. Thank you very much. And thank you for listening. Uh, the DMT one to one comes out every week. Uh, and uh, if you like this show, you can also check out Digital Music Trends, a weekly news show on the music uh, tech industry of the week. Uh, this is all on digitalmusictrends.com. Thanks so much for listening. Have a great week. And until next time. Yeah.